All right, thanks guys. I am feeling great on a Friday morning. One, because it's Friday. And two, because we went 4-1 on our five premium sports picks on BrockPage.com yesterday. That's going to put us at 7-2 in our last $9.99 daily best plays on that website. And if you want to access today's $1.99 daily best play, it's only going to cost you just $1.99. We're also 3 and 1 in our last four NBA tier package picks on BrockPage.com as well. And the good news is we have another NBA tier package pick going off here this evening. We currently have over 755 members who are signed up and active on that site. And if you want to see which one of these free YouTube picks on this video that I'm actually betting on personally, there's only one way to do that, and that's to sign up for a membership on my website at BrockPage.com. The Nets take on the Pistons, 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off. Brooklyn is minus 10.5, totals to 11. Brooklyn's on a three-game winning streak, top three in the league and shooting the three ball on the road. Patty Mills is making over 52% of his three-pointers, 11 points a game and three assists for Patty. And speaking of scoring, Kevin Durant's averaging over 28 points a game, along with eight rebounds, five assists. Now defensively, Brooklyn's allowing only 105 points a game, and they rank in the top three in defensive field goal percentage. They're taking on a 1-7 Detroit squad who failed to cover the point spread in their last three straight. Livers and Smith are both questionable for today's action. The Pistons are currently dead last in the NBA in defending the three ball. They're allowing their opponents to make 43% of their three-pointers against them. Detroit's also in the second of a back-to-back -back here today. And when it comes to the total in this one, three out of Detroit's last four at home fell under the number. Meanwhile, Brooklyn's 7-1 to the under for the whole year. I'm going to lean toward Brooklyn, minus 10.5, under 211. Next game, Spurs, Magic, 7 o'clock Eastern start time. San Antonio's minus three and a half, numbers 213. The Spurs covered in three out of their last four ball games, top five in the association in offensive field goal percentage. DeJounte Murray scoring 18 points a game, seven rebounds, eight assists. Meanwhile, Keldon Johnson's dropping 15 points a night, along with five boards and a couple assists as well. The Spurs are in the top five in fourth quarter scoring on the road. They're taking on an Orlando squad who lost five out of their last six. They currently find themselves winless on the road. Now Moore and Carter Williams, they're out. Harris is questionable. The Magic's dead last in the NBA in home scoring. They're also dead last in shooting the three ball at home as well. When it comes to the number in this one, two out of Orlando's last three contests at the Amway Center got over the line. Orlando's also 6-3 and three to the over for the entire season. Meanwhile, the Spurs saw four out of their last six get over the total themselves. I'm going to lean towards San Antonio, minus 3.5, over 213. Next game, Grizzlies, Wizards, 7 o'clock Eastern start time. Memphis is minus one, totals 221. The Grizzlies give up a whole bunch of points. Uh, bottom three in points allowed per contest, bottom three in defending the three ball. The Grizzlies are letting their opponents make 40% of their three-pointers against them when traveling. They're taking on a Washington team who actually averages 118 points a night at home. Bradley Beal scoring over 24 points a game, five rebounds, four assists for the guard. Meanwhile, Montrez Harrell's averaging 18 points a game himself along with nine boards to assists. And speaking of boards, the Wizards are in the top five in offensive rebounding at home. And when it comes to the injury report, Bryant, Hachimura, Winston Gill, and Bertans, they're all listed as out. Having said that, though, those players have been injured for most of the season, so the Wizards have actually been putting up these numbers without them. Now, when it comes to the scoring in this one, three out of Washington's last four, at the Capital One Arena, got over the line. I'm going to lean toward Washington, plus one, over 221. Next matchup, Knicks, Bucks, 7.30 Eastern tip-off. Milwaukee's minus four, totals 217. 
The Bucs have failed to cover in three out of their last four ball games. One and three straight up at the Pfizer Forum. Middleton and DiVincenzo, they're still out. Lopez and Holiday are questionable. Milwaukee's in the bottom 10 in offensive field goal percentage at home. They're also shooting just 30% from beyond the arc at the Pfizer. They're taking on a Knicks team who's in the top three in offensive three-point percentage. Kemba Walker's drilling 51% of his three-pointers, 13 points a game and three assists per contest for Kemba. And speaking of points, Julius Randle's getting over 20 and a half points a night along with 11 boards, five assists. The Knicks are in the top three in scoring on average per game. And total-wise, three out of New York's last five ball games fell under the total. Meanwhile, Milwaukee's 5-0 to the under in their last five straight. I'm going to lean toward New York plus four, under 217. Next matchup, Cavs, Raptors, 7.30 Eastern start time. Toronto's minus five and a half, totals 206. But as good as Toronto's been this season... They're actually just two and three straight up at the Scotiabank Arena this season. The Raptors also failed to cover the point spread in four out of those five home games. Toronto scoring only 102 points a game on their home court, and they're shooting just 42% from the field in that very same category. Siakam and Watanabe, they're still out. Barnes is questionable. Toronto's taking on a Cavs team who's on a two-game winning streak, 6-1 and one against the spread in their last seven. Cleveland's allowing just 103 points per contest on the road, and they're in the top 10 in defending the three ball. Jared Allen's grabbing over 10.5 rebounds a night, 14 points a game for Allen as well. And speaking of scoring, Colin Sexton's averaging over 17.5 points a game, along with three boards. Now, total-wise, Four out of Cleveland's last six road games did fall under the line. The Cavs are officially 6-3 and three to the under for the entire season. I'm going to lean toward Cleveland plus 5.5, under 206. Next matchup, Clippers, T-Wolves, 8 o'clock Eastern tip-off. LA's minus 2.5, totals 216. The Clippers are on a two-game winning streak. 2-1 two and one against the number in their last three road games. The Clippers are leading the NBA in three-point shooting on the road. They're drilling nearly 43% of their three-pointers when traveling. Paul George is drilling nearly 43% of his three balls himself. 28 points a game and seven rebounds for PG. Meanwhile, Luke Kennard's making nearly 45% of his three-pointers himself. 11 points a game for Kennard. Now, defensively, LA is allowing only 104 points per contest. They're taking on a Minnesota team who lost their last three straight, and they failed to cover the point spread in five out of their last six. Russell's out, Edwards and Beverly, they are questionable. The T Wolves are averaging only 103 points per contest on their home court. Now, injury wise, we just uh, went over Minnesota's injuries. Meanwhile, for the Clippers, Preston, Ibaka, and Morris, they're still listed as out. Uh, and once again, those players have been sitting out for all or most of the season already, so I really don't think that should uh, impact uh, L.A.'s performance here. Now, total-wise, two out of L.A.'s last three road games fell under the number, 71% to the under for the entire season. Meanwhile, the Timberwolves are 6-1 to the under for the whole year themselves. I'm going to lean toward the L.A. Clippers, Minus two and a half in the under 216. Next game, Hornets, Kings, 10 o'clock East. Sacramento is minus one and a half, totals 229. The Kings lost two out of their last three. They're one of the worst rebounding teams in the association. The Kings are currently in the bottom 10 in offensive rebounding, bottom five in defensive rebounding as well. Sacramento also allows over 111 points a game. They're taking on a Charlotte team who loves to score. As a matter of fact, Charlotte's currently scoring more points per contest than any other team in basketball. Miles Bridges averages over 24 points a game, 8 rebounds, 3 assists for the forward. Meanwhile, LaMelo Ball is scoring over 19 points a night himself. 6 boards, 6 assists for Melo. Ball's also making 40% of his three-pointers. 
Charlotte's currently leading the NBA in fourth quarter score. Uh, let's try that again. Charlotte's currently leading the NBA in fourth quarter scoring as well. Now, total wise, Charlotte's six and three to the over for the uh, entire season. I'm going to lean towards Charlotte plus one and a half in the over 229. Next game, Pacers, Blazers, 10 o'clock Eastern start time. Portland's minus four and a half, totals 224. And despite their recent skid, the Blazers have still won three of four at the Moda Center this season. Portland's in the top three in home scoring, and they're making nearly 42% of their three-pointers uh, in that building. C.J. McCollum scoring 23 points a game, four rebounds, three assists. And McCollum's also drilling 43% of his three-pointers. Meanwhile, Dame Lillard scoring 19.5 points a night himself. Three boards, 8.5 assists for Dame time. Portland's currently in the top three in offensive rebounding at home. They're taking on a 3-6 and six Indiana squad who lost all four of their road games this year. The Pacers are allowing over 120 points per contest on the road. And they're in the bottom five in defending the three ball on the road as well. Warren and Jackson are still out for the Pacers. Jeremy Lamb is questionable. Three out of the Pacers' last four road games got over the number. I'm going to lean toward... Uh, what we got here? I'm going to lean toward Portland. What's the number again? Uh, Portland uh, minus four and a half in the over 224. And with that, we're going to jump into our next and final matchup. Pelicans, Warriors, 10 o'clock Eastern tip-off. Golden State's minus nine, numbers 216. Golden State won their last two straight, six and one straight up overall for the season. The Warriors are leading the NBA in offensive rebounding at home. They're also in the top three in home three-point percentage. Steph Curry scoring 26 points a game. Seven rebounds, six assists for Steph. He's also making over 97% of his free throws. Jerome Poole scoring 16 points a night himself. A couple of boards, three assists for Poole. The Warriors are averaging over 111 points a game. They're taking on a 1-8 Pelicans team who certainly likes to give up points. They're in the bottom 10 in points allowed per contest. Bottom 5 in defending the three ball. Meanwhile, offensively, the Pels are scoring only 101 points a game when traveling. Zion's still out. Ingram and Jones are questionable. Four out of New Orleans' last five road games fell under the number. 67% to the under overall for the season. Meanwhile, Golden State's 4-0 to the under at home. 6-1 to the under for the whole year themselves. I'm going to lean toward Golden State, minus 9, under 216. It's Quick Pick Recap Time, brought to you by Brock Page Brock... Uh, it's Quick Pick Recap Time brought to you by BrockPage.com, where we are 72 in our last $9.99 daily best plays. I like Brooklyn, minus 10 and a half, under 211. San Antonio, minus 3 and a half, over 213. Washington, plus 1, over 221. New York, plus 4, under 217. Cleveland, plus 5 and a half, under 206. LA Clippers, minus 2 and a half, under 216. Charlotte plus one and a half over 229. Portland minus four and a half over 224. Before I give you my next and final free pick for the video, one final reminder that we are seven and two in our last nine dollar ninety nine daily best plays on BrockPage.com. We're also three and one in our last four NBA tier package picks on that very same website. I'm going to lean toward Golden State minus nine under 216. With that, guys, now it's time for our shout-out of the day. And that's going to go to Rashawn Baskerville, who said yesterday, you're the man, Brock. Shout me out. I'm a new subscriber. And, of course, here's your shout-out, Rashawn. Thanks for joining the Brock Page family, the Brock Page Nation. And with that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on BrockPage.com. Now, if you guys do end up getting a membership here today on that website, just keep in mind, you're going to get billed the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. So if you do end up getting a membership here today on BrockPage.com, you are going to get access to that content all the way through the end of November. I always tell folks in every single video, the earlier in the month you sign up, the better. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. 
I really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, guys, happy Friday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at brockpage.com.